Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, Farah Mali Muhammad is the member of parliament representing the Dabu constituency. And uh, after the 2022 general election, Farah Mali has been a Kenya Kwanza and a William Ruto sympathizer. He was among the people who were saying, give Ruto time. But it has reached a point whereby even those who were sympathizing with William Ruto, those who said that even if Ruto got to power, even through the shortcuts, let us give him time to see if he will work. They are finding a reason not to associate themselves with Ruto. And Faramal is among those people. People are running away from Ruto. We have those who are in Azimio during campaign, but when Ruto became the president, they sympathized with him. But they are saying no. And Farah Mali was reacting to what Rigatha Gashagwa said while in Kisauni, yes, Mombasa County, about what governors need to do in this El Nino times. He put a blame on Mombasa governor as far as El Nino mitigation is concerned. Then Faraman went further also to react on William Ruto's position on El Nino. <laughs> and according to Faraman, Gashagwa failed. He's saying that he's understanding that Gashagwa is a one-term member of parliament. Then he goes further to talk about other things. So I'm seeing like three points in what he's talking about. But first of all, I want to listen Farah Mali reaction to the Gashagwa's remarks and what Ruto said on El Nino. Then we're going to continue with this discussion. But I know he's been there only for one time as a member of parliament before he became a deputy president. But for God's sake, he needs to do better than that. You can't run you know, your mouth the way he's doing it right now. You need to do your own research, go back and, and do the needful. He's a heartbeat away from the presidency of this country. God forbid, but if anything were to happen to William Ruto, he would be our president. With that kind of a material, telling that the governors go and take care of yourselves and plan for it, how? How do you plan for it? How, what, do, what, can, what can the governors do? What assets do they have to mitigate such a situation where they cannot get to an expected mother or a delivered mother? Do they have helicopters? Do they have, uh, what do they have, by the way, let me ask you. There's nothing that they have that can, that can address such a situation. This is, this is bad. So at this, this particular point, what are oh, the Oh, this particular point, this government been? has done, I mean, this is literally going to be the litmus test for, 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 for the way we're going to deal with this government in the future. Because this is a failure, total, total, absolute failure. In the first case, I don't know where the advice came from, or whether the president himself is the one who chose to talk like that. He says there'll be no El Nino. In a way, you, you literally have told the international community to stand down. And then we get an El Nino worse than any El Nino we had before. The last time we had a serious El Nino was in 1997. It's nothing like what you have right now here. It's probably half of what you have now. Now, we are continuing with this particular discussion, but just a quick request. For those who are watching and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our returning subscribers, I'm asking, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, Please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now, let us analyze what Honorable Faramal is saying here. <laughs> Number one, he said that, and which is true, Rigatha Gashagwa is a one term member of parliament before he became the deputy. Indeed, Gashagwa has served for one term as a Madeira member of parliament and a former DO. So what is Farah Mali telling us? That Gashagwa has not much experience in the politics and the political leadership. He served just for one term and that's not enough to have the experience he need to be a deputy. So for that reason, he is failing, number one, because of lack of experience in politics. 
But he goes further to say that in as much he is just a one-term member of parliament, he need to do better than that. So William Ruto gave a person with less or no experience a position to lead as a deputy president. That was a mistake. So Gashagwa is failing, number one, because they lack experience in leadership. And that's why he's talking anyhow. He speak without thinking, without asking for anything, without having the first-hand information. And this is the reason why we are seeing Gashagwa is always, all time, in a campaign mode. Why? Because he believes in politics is all about campaigning mode, campaigning mode. Even when you are given a chance to serve, he think of campaigning. So for him, he think in politics is all about campaign. Lack of experience and even lacking that interest to learn. That is what Farah Mali is talking about. Number two, Farah Mali is saying that you cannot run your mouth the way Gashagwa is doing it. You can't run your mouth the way Gashagwa is doing it. What is he telling us? In simple words, let me put it clear here. What Faramali fear to say is that regarding Gashagwa's mouth is running faster than his brain. That's what he has feared to say. So, he decided to be diplomatic in his approach to Gashagwa. <laughs> so, he used a diplomatic language. But the fact is that Faramal has told us on camera regarding Gashagwa's mouth is running faster than his brain. And when you are doing so, you are bound to make mistake, you are bound to cause accident. And indeed, the Shagwa is causing accident everywhere, all time. Because if the Shagwa is reasoning, then he would understand that he is the chair of IBEC. And how can you be the chair of IBEC where you sit with governors and make decisions? Whereby now you have to work together. Because even governors have their slogan. 48 governments, one country. Because we have 47 counties. Those, those are government entities. But then the eighth one, eighth one is the national government. Here, we have 48 governments, one country. He knows what governors have got. So how do you go and make that kind of statement when you are aware that you have not funded these governors? You sit with them. You know what they are going through. They speak to you. It is because he did not reason. He only speak, then reason later. <laughs> and number three, Faramal is telling us that Gashagwa need to do a research. He's right, but one question. Does Gashagwa have time to do research? Or does Gashagwa understand even the meaning of research? Does he even have time to think of research? Is Gashagwa interested on in, in research? Those are the questions. The fact is that he did not do his research when he was going to Mombasa, and he don't have in a, he did not he don't he does not even have an interest of doing any kind of research. No, he's not interested in that. And because he did not research, that's why you see he's talking like. They gave money to counties. Because the question Faramal is asking is that does governors have helicopters for emergency rescue? What kind of choppers? 
hata kama uko na chakula ya kupelekea watu utatumia njia gani kupeleka hiyo chakula do you have choppers to fly ziko kwa national government polisi wako nazo jeshi wako nazo and the kenya army wako nazo hao ndio wako na hiyo uwezo na mamlaka ya kufanya kazi ya emergency because governors have not been empowered to deal with such kind of situations they are not yet to be empowered why because people are thinking that if you empower the governors they will have nothing to hold at up here so they want to have all powers up here and the governor wa back to watu wa kukimbia na bendera bendera mamlaka ya bendera lakini when it come to operations resources they are the one making such kind of decisions then farama did not stop from there he end up also touching on william ruto what did ruto, what did ruto say there will be no ni ameomba mungu amemwambia hivyo mungu wa ruto ni wa uongo with that alone he make people reluctant even non government organizations the international people who are funding they reluct because of what ruto said ruto has respect presidency presidency is not ruto it is the office that he is sitting there what he speak it is serious at it and it has an impact on kenyans so he spoke and those who are willing to help kenya they reluct and before they were, because they was reluctant we are caught up in a huge mess ukienda huko kwa kina aden dwale the asal areas uko dadap garis mandera mambo ni maajabu na mambo yameharibika people have been swept away with their everything hawana mahali hata na kitu chochote because someone said there was no el nino there was no plan and people relaxed maybe they were planning to eat the money so far man is finding difficult to continue defending ruto and this government and that's why it's coming out to tell them the truth i don't know your views but let us meet in the comment section to continue with this discussion thank you so much and back to this and see you in our next video <laughs>